Welcome to SVN Network. In this video, we want to talk to you about how to check in on a charter boat. Some people underestimate this operation. It's the first thing you do when you arrive. You're anxious to leave for your vacation, and so you try to get rid of this as quickly as possible. Mistake, big mistake. A properly done detailed check-in is what ensures you won't have any problems when you check out that is, when you turn in the boat. To shoot this video, we came to Marina Cala dei Sardi in the northeast of Sardinia. This is the main base of NSS Charter, as some of you may know, the largest charter company in Italy. They are our hosts and they made available the boat and the skippers with which we performed this video. Behind me, you can see the Marina. It's February, it's very peaceful because the base is open only for maintenance. But we're also gonna show you some images of the base during the summer. You'll see how lively it can be, how beautiful it is, and also why we call it the greenest marina in Italy. So let's go see how to do a check-in on a charter boat. To talk about how to do a check-in, I have with me Simona Pasqua. Hi, Hi Simona. Hi, Gabriele. Uh, Simona Pasqua is a skipper with NSS. There are two ways to do a uh, check-in. The first, well, if you hire the skipper, then the skipper will be representing you and work with a representative of the company, so nothing to worry about. But uh, if you don't have a skipper, then you will have to be working with the representative of the company on your own. So you've performed countless of uh, check-ins uh, for your clients. Uh, how does it work? Um, there are some steps that we have to follow. Every company has got a list of things. This is really important. Some are more detailed, some less. But if you, if you follow these steps and tick everything that you say on the list, that is going to be really helpful, you know, to do a proper one. Yes, because there's countless things. It's not possible to remember all of them. But this list is very detailed and you have to go through the list one by one. Yeah, okay. exactly. Why do we do this uh, check-in? Actually, there are two reasons, right? Yeah. The first the reason main, is? The main reason is to get familiar with the boat, uh, because then we have to live in here for a week, and not knowing when there are certain things, when we need them, is going to be a problem. Right. And the second thing is to ensure that everything works at the beginning, so when you come back for the checkout, everything is going to be smooth. Yes, because remember, the boat is insured, but you have a deposit. And any damage you do up to a certain sum will come out of your pocket. So that is understandable. What we don't want to do is pay for damage that we didn't cause. Now, it may sound that some companies are out to cheat you. That's not really true in 90% of the case. They're interested in leaving the client happy and so that the client will come back. But of course, it's always possible for the person who is performing the check-in with you to skip something. Maybe he's tired, maybe he's in a hurry. Say fenders. You're supposed to have eight fenders, but there are only seven. You don't realize that. Come back, there's a missing uh, fender. You have to pay out of it, out of your own pocket. Yeah, so uh, make sure you check in everything, even if you are with a reliable company. Yes. So uh, we're on deck. It's divided in different steps. You told me before that there's First uh, thing we can do is uh, check the things on deck. What yeah. are the main things to check? Main ones are instrument, for example, because uh, every boat has got different GPS, okay? So it's gonna be important that you know how to use it because on a different boat, you add a different model. Yes. Another thing are the language of the instrument because the client that was on the boat before you maybe was from another nationality yeah, and, and so you couldn't find... You, you come up with <laughs> Russian and unless you're a skipper Andre, then you have a major problem. Exactly. There are a number of things which are obvious, I mean, how the engine works, uh, how the ropes uh, work, and, and things like that. But this thing about the language may not be entirely obvious. But you were mentioning also another little secret of this Oceanus 46.1. Ah, one of the secrets, for example, is 
it's uh, just on this model, the tank cap for the diesel and one of the two for the water is hidden under the footrest. Yes. So the gasoline is uh, under that one, close to the wheel on the left, and the water is under this one. So unless you know and you have seen it on the check-in, then you have to go and search for them. Yeah, so if you're bored, you can play a little game find the cat tank cap you know with the other ones who didn't listen to the check-in yeah uh, so other there are, sorry there are a number of things that are very important but you know fairly obvious you know uh, everything is there uh, uh, emergency anchor and so on yeah another thing that is maybe important is the cruising speed of the boat you may think that's obvious it will be in the manual or if you know you can uh, decide that the top speed is the top speed and then you take away 20 percent and that's the cruising speed what you may not know is that a lot of charter companies are worried that their clients will be pushing the lever all the way and just speed away and damage the engine. So what they do is they regulate the speed so you're actually maximum speed becomes cruising speed. Excellent. But if you don't know, you'll be slowing down and going too slow, yes. right? So that's all, all the things you have to know. Uh, what else do we have to know uh, about uh, this? We mentioned something about sales, which was uh, interesting. Well, yes, the sailor, because uh, it's not always possible to try the sail when we are on port, because maybe it's a windy day, so we cannot open them. In that case, you have got 24 hours, you just go out, you can open them later, and if there is a problem, call immediately the agency. Okay, so check everything on deck, electric yeah. windlass, one thing I will try is, for example, the autopilot, right. that is really important. So try it and give plus 10, minus 10 uh, auto and standby. And another thing is the bow thruster. If we have it on our boat, it's essential that you try it first. Yes. Just be careful about one thing. Remember that we have got two lazy line in front. So before trying it, just move the lazy line a little bit backward and try it. But who will be actually pushing the buttons? Will it be you or will it be the representative of the company? No, no, the client. The client has to check that it works. This way also learns how, to, how they yes, work. Yes, exactly. Okay. That sounds uh, good. These, of course, are the main things. The list is very detailed. We can't go through everything. Uh, but I think uh, you've got an idea of what we have to look for. Shall we see the inside and look what we have to check inside the boat? Yeah, let's go. Shall you go? I'll follow you. Let's go inside this Oceanus 46.1 and let's continue our check-in with Simona Pasqua. Once we are inside, I will start checking the documents of the boat. So make sure they are on board and the documents are all in there. Yeah. Also, everyone has to have their IDs, but of course they will have to hand them in, you know, at yeah. the office. So yes. They will. Then, after the documents, I will go to the electric panel and check the 12 volt panel and the 220 and make sure you know every single switch uh, what it is uh, yeah. because sometimes you have got the name but sometimes not. The only symbols and sometimes they're not entirely obvious. Yeah. Then I will go to the VHF, so knowing how to switch it on, off and change channels, that is really useful as well. And from that I will go to the batteries. So Right. To all the switches for the batteries, you know, domestic, uh, domestic, the engine and the thermal. Right, the breakers. Yes, right. we have got in here the one for the windlass, for the electric winch, uh, the electric blanket. And that's very important because, for example, there's too much strain in the windlass, yeah. the breaker goes off and suddenly you don't know what to do. If you know what where the breaker is, wait five minutes, turn it on and you're And set. it works again, yes. Then I will check the motor so that inside uh, is clean, that there is no oil and that there is no water. Same as we do with the bilge. Yes. It's better checking that there is no water over there as well. Sorry, do we also check the level of the oil in the motor and the sail drive? That would be better. It's always been done in the morning, you know, by the guys, by the, the NSS people. Uh, but it, if you want, it's actually better if you check it yourself. Okay. 
then I will go here in the dinette and pulling out all the cushion, I will check what is underneath. Right. Because there is the boiler, for example, there is sometimes the safety equipment, uh, or the switch for the, uh, for the water. The valves. Yes, the valves. Right. Uh, it can be here or it can be under the sink or sometimes uh, inside uh, the bathrooms. Right. And most boats now have two uh, freshwater tanks, is that right? Yes. Okay, so you need to know where the valves are because maybe one will be open when you leave, but uh, if you run out of water, then you have to know where the second tank valve is so you can turn it on. Yeah, then we can also check the kitchen. What I mean is the gas valve yes. because we check the tank outside, but now it's important that we know where the valve is to open and close it. And make sure they turn on. Yes. Right. Then I will check all the bathrooms. That the wa that they really works. Uh, I mean that the water comes in and goes out, uh, and also checking the shower pump uh, that everything works. Uh, speaking of bathrooms, waste holding tanks, this dirty subject we do have to speak about. Uh, what do we do with that? Do we have to check for anything? Yes, we do. We need to know where the valves are. They are not always easy to find. For example, on this boat, there is one that is completely hidden and is not easy. In this cabin, the one for this toilet, it's under the cabinet over there. Who would know? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's inside the wardrobe and you are not going to think about that. Right. Uh, one question. This valve, do we keep it open, closed? I mean, navigating, once, for example. Once we are outside the harbour, we are going to open them. But every time we come into an harbour or in a bay, you know, because we are having a swim, always remember to close them. Right. So if we keep them open, we will be sure the tank is always empty. Yes. Then if we stop at bay or in a port, of course, we'll remember to close it. Yes. That right. would be better. Yes. <laughs> what else, Simona? A uh, few little things like the key of the boat. Sometimes we don't remember about that, so be sure you have it on board. Right. Or it's going to be a little problem. And then I will check the lights in every cabin and the dinette yeah. or the fans. Yeah, because sometimes the switches are entirely obvious. Like home, you know, there's the switch. And yeah. this morning I wanted to turn out the lights in the saloon. I couldn't find it, but they were right over my head. <laughs> I know now. <laughs> so uh, I think we covered uh, pretty much everything. Yes, pretty much. I wish to thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, let us know by clicking on like. I also wish to thank Simona Pasqua. Thank you. And NSS Charter, who provided the boat and the skippers. The appointment is for the next video. I'm Gabriel Poole. This is SVN Network.